Welcome to Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, the channel that talks about the easy things that we can do to improve our financial health. I'm Kevin, and today I'm going to tell you what to look for in a health savings account, or an HSA, and really there's just three main things to consider, particularly if you're looking to invest the funds in the account. Whether you're choosing your first HSA, or considering changing your HSA provider, this video is for you. Now I'm doing this video because like a lot of you, I started with the HSA that my employer set me up with. But over time, I decided that the convenience of them automatically taking money out of my pay and putting it into the HSA did not weigh the negative issues with the HSA itself. So I decided to change mine, and I'll tell you why as I go through the list of the things to look for. Now I've talked about HSAs in detail in other videos, and I've talked about the requirements to have one and be able to put more money into it. I've talked about the contribution limits, uh, the strategies to best maximize the benefits of having an HSA. Um, I'm not going to cover all that here today because again, I already have it. But what I will do is link a video for you in the description so you can check it out. But let's get back to today and talk about the three things to look for when selecting an HSA. The first one is investing options. Now this was probably the least important reason for me to pick the one I did, but it's really important because as I've shared in other videos, this is where you grow your wealth. And in fact, 95% of the people who have an HSA don't invest the funds in their account. Now I've done a video on the performance of how a fund will do over time, whether you invest it or don't invest it. You probably want to check that out if you haven't started investing the funds in your HSA. Uh, again, I'll link a video for you in the description. Now, what you're looking for is a lot of options in different low cost, no load mutual funds and ETFs. And when you're comparing those funds, you want to look at expense ratios. You're looking for low ones because any higher expenses of the fund itself, it actually takes away from your investment performance or your return. So definitely want to look at your investing options. The second thing, and this is probably one of the two big reasons I decided to change my HSA, is fees. So fees are pretty common with health savings accounts. Now for me, what I was dealing with was I had a, an account management fee. That came to $2.95 every month. Um, and then I also had an investment account fee, and that was another $3 a month. So when you put those together, $5.95 a month, we're going right out. Now, that doesn't sound perhaps like a lot, but over the course of a year, that's $71.40. Again, it might seem manageable to have a pretty good account that can actually make money for you, right? Well, over 20 years, that $71.40 turns into $1,428 of actual dollars taken from me. So that doesn't sound as good. But then when you also take into consideration that that money was also not being invested and not compounding year over year, I was missing out on a lot more than that. So assuming that there's a 7% rate of return on my funds and my investments, that $1,428 would then turn into $2,927.08 that I would not be getting. So you can see how missing out over $3,000 over 20 years irked me a little bit. And for some of you that are starting with an HSA at a much younger age, you could be missing out on many more years of that growth. So uh, you definitely want to consider the fees. And there are options for um, HSAs that have no fees at all. So I'll, and I'll tell you about one here in a second. But before I tell you that, let's talk about the third thing I look for when choosing an HSA. And that is, is there a minimum in the account that you have to have before you can invest? So a lot of HSAs have an account requirement number of between $500 and $2,000, with a common one being around $1,000. So what that means is you can't invest your money in your account until you get $1,000, and that's the way my HSA was. And it's not just you have to get to $1,000 before you can invest it, is that there's always $1,000 that you can't invest at all. It always has to stay in the account. So what you may not realize is the opportunity cost in the money that was never invested. And this is the second reason I decided to change my HSA. So let's talk about the numbers a little bit. Now I will tell you that they do pay interest on that $1,000. That interest rate was 0.007%. Way under the average of 7% that I could expect when investing. So when you consider that, that, that means that that $1,000 over the course of a year would come to about 70 cents that I would earn in interest, which as you saw does not cover the fees that I had. Now if I was able to take that $1,000 and invest it, and again get a very reasonable 7% return, uh, that would come out to about $70. So $70 is not big money, but it's still a lot better than 70 cents. But again, it's like we talked about earlier, when you look down 20 years down the road and you're missing out on that compound interest over that 20 years. So in this case, that $70 could turn into $3,138.92. Whereas the 70 cents, 
over 20 years, that turns into $14.70. Not really comparable, right? So that's, again, when I was talking about the opportunity cost of not being able to invest that money. Okay, so looking at my options, after looking at those considerations, I decided on picking an HSA by Lively for myself. And I picked them because they met all the requirements I was looking for. No fees, I can invest everything in the account, and I can invest through them with their affiliation through TD Ameritrade, and there's no fees with that as well. So if you're interested in checking them out for yourself, I'll put a link for you in the description. Now keep in mind that Lively is not sponsoring this video, but if you were to open an account from the link, I would be eligible for a small referral. So keep that in mind, but definitely make the best decision for yourself and always do your due diligence. Okay, so that's the three big things I look for in an HSA. Things like debit cards and an easy to use website would also be important. But let me know if you think there's something else to consider that I didn't mention in this video. You can put that in the comments. And I didn't want this video to get too long, but if you're interested in getting more information on how to transfer from one HSA to another, let me know. I'd be more than happy to make a video on that as well. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please like it and share it with anyone that you feel could benefit from the information. I know I wish someone had shared the benefits of an HSA with me years before I learned it for myself. And if you like videos on saving and making money, definitely consider subscribing. It's totally free, and it'll make sure you don't miss any new videos as soon as they come out. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.